Ah, so David, what are you thinking about in this strange world? Oh, here, I I had I had a, a counterattack that, that has put me pretty much under the carpet for the last three weeks. Good. So. Um, and in the back row. And in the back row, <laughs> it's like that's how that's how bad it is. Um, so. Um, Maybe, maybe so you thought immediately to call Pierre and set up a talk. Well, I did actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, really, you, thanks for the question. And, and you know, I, I'm trying to get back into the Republic. Um, but every, at, at every turn, there's something that comes up. And so, um, makes it difficult. I notice that when I hear a good idea, I want to share it with somebody. And the other day I realized, why the fuck do I want to share it with somebody? Why can't I just own it? Why can't it just be my good idea? Something, something that I do for myself. And I've never done that before. It's always been, boy, I can't wait to share this idea. And, um, and so I've become a little more introverted as a result of that lately. But stuff like that. After of. this talk. After, after this talk today? Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm available. Done. And, uh, if, if somebody else is working on something, I, I'd be delighted to hear interesting reports. Is, is that the kind of thing that... Um, I, I have a thing where it's like... Um, when I get that desire to share something that I just discovered or something new, it it, it interrupts me and blocks me from enjoying it further myself. Well, so yeah, is it's it kind that of that like, kind of thing. It's a fantasy. It becomes a fantasy. I think Pierre mentioned somebody going into a fantasy in their talk last night, and 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 that's kind of kind of what it is. It becomes a fantasy that's a distraction, a fantasy or a daydream distraction that takes you off of what you're focused on and, and into a, a, a state of mind that's um, fantastic, not real. And I just kind of said, well, so back, back to the old drawing board, as they say. Good, good. Ideal. But but I don't know if that helped you with your question. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of ideation there. You know, becomes becomes a drama that, that you go off into. It. And the, the point is that it, you're not on the thing that you were into anymore. Right. Right. And and you're into that state of mind of the fantasy of. Being that, being that thing. Mm. So you can't have a problem if you're not intelligent. I'm beginning. Well, yeah. Um, it's a mark of intelligence to have a problem. Well, I don't deny that I'm intelligent. It's just, Mike. but I may be so intelligent that my problems become <laughs> overwhelming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, more simple it is. Okay. But like, look at the problem with <clears throat> Trump. Uh, he, has a, he has a low level of intelligence. Therefore, he can't see, can't even see he has a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think the person has any <laughs> self-perspective. It's so overwhelming. It's, it's, it, there's no there's no there's no self-reflective uh, controls in in what he does. It's, it's, yeah, and I don't know if that's a mark of intelligence or not. You know, to be, well, to, but to, to think about what you're doing. 
you know. What did you just do? You just lied to the people of America, you know, six times today. That's no, it has no idea of truth. Yeah. So a problem is a gift. That's a good one. You, you said it. He's our first American tragedy. Beg your pardon? What? What is? He's our first American tragedy. He has reached the level of a tragedy. He's presenting himself to the American public as a mystery. Okay. Right. Twenty million people have watched the comedy on TV. Okay. What does that mean? People are curious about where this thing is going. Uh, and the truth behind what, whatever yeah. it is mm -hmm. of Papa Trump. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And, but you, you think he's presenting himself as a tragedy? I mean, that, 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 his, that you could almost write it as there'll be a tragic outcome to this no. and that he will see not no. only uh, he, won't, be, he won't see so he won't be a true tragic hero that's why it's going to it's going to test him yeah because like all of everything he's doing is a self-inflicted disaster that's mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what he's saying that's getting getting him caught it's repetition all over the place well there's a point in the tragedy where the um, the hero realizes the nature of the harm he's caused to the people and himself the, pe the people he loved and the, and himself and and that's that's the pain that's the the pathos of a tragedy when you realize that you're suffering. Look what this man just did to himself, his career, and everyone in his house that he loved. He's ruined their lives. It, 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 he's not going to be capable of seeing that, I don't think. So it'll be whether or not he's going to go down as a tragic hero in the classic sense, and that will be very elevated. Yeah. Or whether he's tragic in the popular sense. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be one or the other. Ending up against the freeway abutment with no insight. Yeah. But the irony is, uh, formally in what he's doing, he's a great president. Mm. I not thought about it in those uh, terms. Formally. Like, he's creating the conditions for peace with Russia and China. Yeah, he's, he's creating the dialogue there right. somehow. And, and that's the very thing our, the right wing in our country are against. Like David suggested, he's opening the dialogue. Has he gone further than that? And hence, he just is deserving of the title and of creator of peace between. Well, and, and he's going to, of course, make a, a probably he'll be the richest person ever in history. Yeah. See, that's my problem with him creating a dialogue in peace. I don't think he's creating a dialogue in peace. I think he got in trouble with the Russian mafia, realized that that's where the money is, and is doing a backdoor to uh, playing their game. That's and, true. and the same with China. He sees it as a marketing opportunity for his daughter. That's absolutely true. And and so the whole thing is tainted by that. Um, but, but will it avoid a war? Um, because we're going, you know, we've been going down the road of war. <coughs> a nuclear holocaust. Yeah. Very close. So maybe the price is that, that we live in a world where the mafia of a very variety of forms can all profit by peace. So I'm for it. Let them make another couple of billion. I don't give a damn. 
<laughs> I'm very near your position. Right, I mean, you know. Well, I really don't like people dying everywhere from gunfire and bombs and drones, so I'm in favor of anything that avoids that. No, yeah, that's right. Step two, let's try to feed the people and the children who have their brain capacity compromised by lack of nutrition all over the world. That'd yeah, be cool, too. That's right. And, and these powerful mm. people don't want to do anything where there is no return for them personally. Yeah. Well, okay, if that's what it takes to save mankind while we're in an interim period, so let it pay for it. It would be a, like a nice fluke. Yeah, even though I'm not for Trump by any means. And but it's, there's a positive side to this, which is rather curious. Yeah, philanthropy is on the... Uh, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is on the rise. Mm -hmm. And philanthropy seems to have been set aside. Yeah. Like the Elon Musk and the, the Virgin Atlantic guys who, let's go to space and let's... let's, let's Let's try something new with, but but we're really not pushing towards that other vision we used to have, the Kennedy vision, the feed the world vision anymore. And the big thing is, you know, uh, to what extent has there been a very strong negative force in American politics called the right wing? And that's played a ruinous role all the way from the days of Dulles all the way to the present. And is this being circumvented by Trump? By his idiocy, but not by design. You think, you think um, he's not playing the role of a foil, that he actually is a foil? Yeah. I thought he was playing the role of a foil. No, I don't think he has that. It's a question of whether or not he has that mission consciousness to use okay. it. I mean, Tillerson right. says we we can't red light um, Katar, Cater, and Trump the very next in, in, within three hours red lights Cater, Qatar, Qatar. So I mean, yeah, so I see what you're saying mm -hmm. that he's he's going against even what you know the the smartest of the Republican rep you know, uh, what his own cabinet recommends. <clears throat> Do you have those sheets? Oh. It's, it's very interesting that somebody that's uh, so profit-driven could accidentally uh, cause peace. Yes, I totally agree. <clears throat> that's right. I mean, in a way, he is the model of the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. If you add to it uh, uh, a megalomania, which, which may, may in fact be the fullest expression of it. Mm. Like that. I'm, like, these people, are they're sitting around waiting to see whether they can nail Trump. But that means he has to make such a clear statement that in their terms they can understand it as being a dangerous statement that has implications legally. Mm -hmm. He'll never make those kinds of statements. It's not in him to be that clear about anything. Because he doesn't stand for anything. He doesn't stand for yeah. He just yeah. stands for profit. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's funny, he's kind of like a neutral... Uh, he's, a, he's an a... the use of the word amoral fits him. Right. Or nearly non-moral. Right, right. The difference between amoral and unmoral. Right, right, right. Now, this is rather remarkable. Uh, this is the guy, the author. <laughs> Do you want to read it out loud or something? Yeah, great idea. Go ahead. John F. Kennedy was assassinated because he posed a threat to the agenda of the military security complex. Hold on. Oh. Pass it down. 
John F. Kennedy was assassinated because he posed a threat to the agenda of the military security complex. This Memorial Day, Monday, 29th, 2017, is the 100th birthday of John JFK, the 35th President of the United States. JFK was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963, as he approached the end of his third year in office. Researchers who spent years studying the evidence have concluded that President Kennedy was assassinated by a conspiracy between CIA, Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the Secret Service. Kennedy entered office as a cold warrior. As a cold warrior, I should be capitalized. But he learned from his interaction with the CIA and Joint Chiefs that the military security, security complex had an agenda that was self-interested and a danger to humanity. He began working to defuse tensions with the Soviet Union. His rejection of plans to, his, his rejection of plans to invade Cuba of the Northwoods project of a preemptive nuclear attack on the Soviet Union and his attention to withdraw from Vietnam after his re-election together with some of his speeches signaling a new approach to the foreign policy in the nuclear age, convinced the military security complex that he was a threat to their interests. Cold War conservatives regarded him as a naive about the Soviet threat and the liability to U.S. national security. He, there were, there were, these were the reasons for his assassination. These views were set in stone when Kennedy announced on June 10, 1963, negotiations with Soviets toward nuclear test ban treaty and a halt to U.S. atmospheric nuclear tests. The Oswald cover-up story never made any sense and was contradicted by all evidence, including tourist films of the assassination. President Johnson had to cover had to cover up the assassination, not because he was part of it, or because he willfully wanted to see, deceive the American people, but because to give Americans a true story would have shaken their confidence in their government at a critical time in U.S.-Soviet relations. To make the cover-up succeed, Johnson needed the credibility of the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Earl Warren, to chair the commission that covered the, assa covered the assassination. Warren understood the devastating impact the true story would have on the public and their confidence in the military and national security leadership and on American allies. As I previously reported, Lance DeHaven, DeHaven Smith, in his book Conspiracy Theory in America, shows the CIA introduced conspiracy theory into the political lexicon as a technique to discredit skepticism of the Warren Commission's cover-up report. He provides the CIA document that describes how the agency used its media friends to control the explanation. The term conspiracy theory has been used ever since to validate false explanations by discrediting true explanations. Is that correct? Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Wow, that's the exact opposite sentence of what you Isn't expect. that something? That's the exact opposite of the truth. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. That's, they framed that idea. Mm-hmm to validate false explanations by discrediting true explanations. Ken President Kennedy was also determined to require the Israel lobby to register as a foreign agent. That's major. Could be, uh, <laughs> yeah. And to block Israel's acquisition of nuclear weapons. His assassination removed the constraints on Israel's illegal activities. But Memorial Day is when Americans honor those in the armed services who died serving the country. JFK fell while serving the cause of peace and nuclear disarmament. In, 1961, in a 1961 address to the United Nations, President Kennedy said, Today, every inhabitant of this planet must contemplate the day when this planet may no longer be habitable. Every man, woman, and child lives under a nuclear sword of Damocles hanging by the slenderest of threads, capable of being cut at any moment by accident or miscalculation or by madness. The weapons of war must be abolished before they abolish us. It is therefore our intention to challenge the Soviet Union not to an arms race but to a peace race, to advance together step by step, stage by stage, until general and complete disarmament have been achieved. That's the death sign. Wow. I didn't know he said that. That's a beautiful statement. Isn't it? Yeah. Kennedy's address will, was well received at home and abroad and, the favor, and received a favorable and support, a supportive response from uh, Soviet Khrushchev leaders. said, go for it. 
but it caused consternation among the war hawks and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The U.S. led in terms of number of nuclear war warheads and delivery systems, and this lead was the basis for U.S. military pl plans for a surprise attack on the Soviet Union. Also, many believe that nuclear disarmament, uh, disarmament would remove the obstacle to the Soviet army overrunning Western Europe. Excuse me, my eyes aren't working. Warhawks considered this great threat, this a greater threat than nuclear Armageddon. Many in high military circles regarded President Kennedy as weakening the U.S. vis-a-vis -vis the Soviet Union. The assassination of President Kennedy was an enormous cost to the world. Kennedy and Khrushchev would have followed up their collaboration in defeating the Cuban Missile Crisis by ending the Cold War long before the military security complex achieved its iron grip on the U.S. government. Israel would have uh, been denied nuclear weapons, and the designation of the Israel lobby as a foreign agent would have pre prevented Israel's strong grip on the U.S. government. In his second term, JFK would have broken the CIA into thousands, a thousand pieces, an intention he expressed to his brother Robert, and this deep state would have been terminated before it became more powerful than the president. But the military security complex struck first and pulled off a few coup that avoided all these promises and terminated American democracy. Now look at the author's bibliography. Look at this. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts attended four of the finest universities, studied under two Nobel, Pri Nobel Prize winners in economics, authored 20 peer-reviewed articles in journals and scholarship, published four academic press review peer-reviewed books, Including, including Harvard and Oxford universities, and seven commercially published books. His most recent book is The Neoconservative huh. Threat to a World Order, Washington's Perilous War for Hege Hegemony. What's hegemony? Hegemony is, 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 this is the first uh, political domination of other countries. This is the first example of a straightforward article on the Kennedy assassination I've ever read by someone with that kind of background. Yeah. yeah. It's taken this long. Uh -huh. For this wow. to come out by yeah. a respected thinker. Oh, yeah. Right? Where was this published? Where uh, right off the web. Oh, published at paulcraigroberts.org. Yeah. Originally. Yeah, that's where I downloaded it. Hmm. Cool. So is there a conspiracy then to try and get Trump out and put Pence in? Well, that's a question that now has to come up, doesn't it? Given what we just read and what you've been saying. Yeah. So in spite of the fact that this man is unstable, et cetera, et cetera, and whatever he's doing is for his own personal fortune, he's actually an instrument of peace. Therefore, they have to get rid of him. I, I mean, there's good reasons to get rid of him, but who are they going to put in place? Israel. That's right. It's going to be someone who is accepted by the <laughs> Israeli, <laughs> Israeli Congress, what, the IPP. Mm-hmm. It's astonishing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so I thought it was significant enough to pass copies around. Thank you. <coughs> what is the IPP? Israeli, I don't know. What's the IPP? Robert, something like that. I didn't get your... What is the IPP? Well, is that that's, what you mean? Or what do you mean? I've made up that. Where he okay. Oh. It's, a, it's a, the Israeli private, it's in Israeli uh, public policy. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, they go by another name. I just made that up. Right. It's called the Israeli lobby, essentially. Hmm. I'd be interested in hearing more on why that designation of Israel's lobby as a foreign agent would have, in fact, prevented them getting a grip on the government, which is what he's saying. No, he said no. He, that's true. I'd but like it will also how. block them from getting nuclear bombs. I like both to yes. know how both of those things work. Yeah, when I lived in, in uh, Houston, our neighbor, Jewish guy, physicist, packed up all his stuff and secretly left to become an Israeli citizen. But his specialty was atomic energy. Hmm. So 
they, and that was after the Kennedy assassination. So he heard his calling. Now he was called up. Mm. Yeah. Wow. See, it's interesting that after World War II, uh, they, uh, Truman wanted to disband the OSS which later became the CIA. That's why they changed their name. And it was all, it was really over uh, the problem of the Nuremberg trial. So, curiously enough, uh, my little unit, which is an S2 unit, uh, after World War II, we were, in, we were the muscle people who raided German houses to collect the Nazi people who later became on trial in the Herbert trials. Mm. So uh, little did I know, I was just uh, leading seven men and six men, seven man unit in these raids at night. Uh, but mm. one of these guys said to me, who we only knew by first names, of course, that the problem was that the uh, Catholic Church is allowing uh, the SS, some of the key members of the SS, to escape mm. by donning church clothes and getting out of there. Wow. And after the war, I read about our friend Howard Hughes, whose great international plane that first came out uh, the first international airplane oh, uh -huh. was the one that picked up these German SS people and industrialists oh, escaped in the Nuremberg trial and flew them to South America. Uh -huh. mm. And Dulles was the key figure in this. And therefore there was a battle whether or not the OSS should be disbanded since it only had a function for World War II. So then they made the CIA out of that group. And now that turned around to be an internal as well as external force of intelligence independent of the government. So does that mean that there is no independent prosecutor, uh, no independent legal force apart from the government? Individuals. I mean, like this Mueller guy, for instance. Individuals. Individuals can be free. Okay. And, and so that everybody's banking on this Mueller guy not being a part of this process. Who serves, by the way, at the pleasure of the president. It's very strange how I, how I... Like, I was interviewed for the CIA when I was in college. Okay. And uh, I said, said to the guy, you know... I was broke, and uh, there was a nice payment getting involved in the CIA, and I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm not interested, I think, in carrying another another rifle for another war. So I, I went go any further. I said, well, that war never would have ended either. And that would have... <laughs> One of my en many ex-wives ended up in the NSA right about two Which years... One? Karen. Oh, about two years before the phone hacking thing broke, they were doing massive recruiting, and she was involved in her ballet studio, but she also had a math degree, and they must have found out she had that math degree, and she ended up working in, a, um, in um, Annapolis, Maryland, uh, at an NSA uh, facility. I don't know what she was doing, but yep. with, with a math math degree and and no, I'm sure she was just you know doing doing phone phone tapping. That's, that was my conclusion. Somewhere in the wire tapping system, but she was a monster anyway. So See, this is an indictment. <coughs> the first time <coughs> I've ever seen this kind of indictment, which seems to me to be really central to the whole thing. Yeah, this is amazing. That, uh, wow. The CIA 
the Joint Chiefs of the Military Security Complex. Look, look, the State Department. Look how many, how many uh, branches of the U.S. government he's including in this. The Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. In the Supreme Court. Supreme Court. Where's that? Earl oh, Warren. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. The Warren Report. The Warren. Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> like, what, what does it leave out? What would uh, happen if um, the Supreme Court has not been completely conservative, but McConnell was happy or has shown that he's going to be replaced, there's going to be replacement of several judges? You can't wait for Ruth Bader Ginsburg to die. He wakes up every morning hoping she's dead. So that would be what? What direction? That would be more a, a kind of a, a religious tyranny, military tyranny, with the far right as being um, well, ruling. Well, so uh, I just read something in the paper. What you're doing is going a, you have a, of course, a good point, but it's not covered in the article. No, I, I was. And needs to be. In this article. That's correct. Oh, and the one that I read. Yeah. No, they don't. It's just reporting. It's not implications. Oh. Yeah, what's missing is that what is the role of the right wing Christian evangelical movement in this whole conspiracy shit? Well, oh, that too. The, the conspiracy that found a popular base yeah. and managed to find the base and maybe 39% but it's the base yeah. and it's enough to pervert an election. It's like the fake news idea, same kind of... Pence yesterday she talked to a Christian group and said that the, the greatest legacy of Donald Trump will be the 120 judges that he gets to appoint all of whom are going to represent Christian values. Well, that's what he said yesterday. G. Kennedy was a Catholic. He was the first Catholic president. Well, he wasn't part of the right wing that's Christian right. movement. He was not Christian then. You could be a that came with Nixon. You could be a Catholic and an intellectual at the same time. Yeah. That's what the Jesuits are supposed to be. Oh. Oh. We got Julie thinking, look. Oh, I'm hot on this topic. I did a major speech on the Warren Commission report when I was in community college, and I, I really investigated it. I'm really hot on this book here, The Conspiracy Two of them. Theory in America. Yeah, that book and his. Yeah. Wow. Right? The, he did that neoconservative threat to world peace. I, when I was young, I was into late night TV. Steve Allen, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered Mort Saul. And he was the first public figure to uh, question the Warren Report. Yeah. And I, I wanted to um, get that information. Mm -hmm. And I asked my parents to get me that information. And they said, no, you can't have that information. Oh. I was about 14 at the time, maybe 16. 16, because it was after, it was shortly after the death of Kennedy. Oh, remember Miguel? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a trilateral commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it would have been great if back then we had access to the 
the kind of information we have now. I mean, that's that's something. I mean, kids look at their phones and their their Twitters and all that stuff. But the other half of it is you can get this kind of stuff. Yeah, but see, there's so many people who knew the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, it's time to release it since it's nearly 50 years, and then it's appropriate to reveal the truth about American history, as we often do, right? Wait for the people to die off that made the decision, and then they suddenly write their books. Let me ask you, I've been, you know, the, the terrorist attacks, that have been occurring throughout the world. Do it again. I said the terrorist attacks. Um, You're talking about Timothy, uh, Timothy McVeigh, right wing Christian group that, that blew too. up the Oklahoma. But the ones that they're claiming to be uh, Islamic terrorists. Oh. I find it curious that we have a lot of them really not having a lot of weapons in that sense. Like if they were really hot. If they were really doing what they should be doing at the level that the news articles and everybody is presenting them as, it seems like they would have nuclear bombs and dropping them everywhere. But they don't. They have knives, they have guns, they create havoc and tear in that way. And they have to go through this kind of maneuvering, suicide bombers. Well, America so I, has the Second Amendment. And there's not too many other countries that have a Second Amendment. I remember for years, police in, in Britain did not carry guns. They still don't. And they still don't, okay. Um, Change now. It's changed now. Well, they have some name. armed officers, there's, as I understand, there, but not there. everybody. I'm Unless. going to Paris in the fall, I'll let you know. But I have a feeling it'll be like when I was in Mexico in, in, in uh, 95. Oh, uh, no. Eight, uh, nine, I was in Mexico, and in front of every bank, there was an armed guard with a with a with a high-powered automatic rifle, and I was like, "What? There's a man with a high-powered automatic rifle up standing in front on the street." Um, but uh, you know, guns, the whole the whole balance of power with guns. So if you're wondering whether or not using guns and big weapons, it's, it's, it's America is where we use guns and big weapons. No, I'm thinking that Mexico. there's a, a, a an image that's being presented that these are potential. These are people that have a lot of power. Well, in some way they do, but in another way, they haven't shown the kind of power that we have. That is carrying assault rifles to defend ourselves, and I find that very curious. And if I remember correctly, they used box cutters for the planes to come down for 9-11. And I, I'm just wondering if the um, image that's being presented, not to say that they're not dangerous, but is calculated to create or go towards a heavy kind of armed War. Oh, no. Well, these are individuals. Pardon? These terrorists are individuals. That's why they wanted to destroy ISIS, because that will give them a statehood. And if they have a statehood, right, then the question is. How will Pakistan and, and uh, Iran relate to them? Oh, yeah. uh, especially since Pakistan happens to have nuclear weapons. Yep. And they're the, then a home of, of at least defending the terrorist movement. Will they share with them such secret weapons as the atomic bomb? So they want to destroy ISIS as a state before it can gain such status. Actually, I'm amazed that they haven't been able to steal one or two. I'm, I'm, I would, I'm sure they have. I, I, you know, I don't see how they, they can avoid it. I mean, why, you know, people, so many countries are up. 
Yes. If you have enough money, then you can steal it from us. Yeah, the dissolution of the Soviet Union was yeah. the, the weak spot in that yeah. whole thing. I'm sure there was a lot of fissile material that was transferred during that period. Yeah. Well, so we're watching it, the most curious political event in history, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, one of them. <laughs> it's got all these inner contradictions. <laughs> Trump, Trump keeps using the word this story, but it's, just, it's not for the reasons he thinks it's a, it is. Yeah, like, is that, <laughs> is he following the same model? Hmm. Unconsciously. Consciously. Trump is following the same no, model. No, no, the opposition to Trump. Ah. The opposition being his own people is what it seems like you're indicating. Who do you see as the opposition that is utilizing this same strategy, yeah. Pierre? Yeah. Who? It's the same people. CIA, State Department. But it wouldn't be part of the ultra-right. It would be an expression of the ultra-right. Oh, okay. I think so it would be McConnell and those guys. I think we, we was pro-Israel. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's real fun, isn't it? So it, it, mm -hmm. it, is it, it's, it sounds like... Um, Trump is getting into a similar situation as yeah. Kennedy. Yeah, even though Kennedy was a hero. Right, but and, Trump didn't make a speech. Tr Trump is a, 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 a two-legged idiot. Uh, nonetheless, they pose a similar threat to the, the right-wing movement, mm -hmm. conspiracy movement. <laughs> so that a lot of rational people are against Trump because he's so irrational, but on the other hand, he's, he's fitting a model that matches Kennedy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, like he works. got the Chinese to, to grant him copyright status over 300 different products in one full sweep. I mean, what the, the enormous money that that's going to generate just by the accomplishment. Yeah, I heard about 10 years ago, they were just trying to get into China, and it was an eyeglass company. Oh. And, uh, and it, they said, you know, there are 2 billion eyes in China. Yeah. And that was their, I mean, and, and that just it says it all. There's so much money to be pulled in terms of necessary services like medical and infrastructure, and se secondary uh, money like commerce and 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 uh, goods and services. There's just so much money to be made there, yeah. and and it's all farmers coming into the city and realizing that if they work hard, they can buy McDonald's. That's right, and, and that's and that's that's as profound as it gets. Unfortunately, I'd go further. I'd say now it's worthwhile if you're selling toothpicks. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Anything. <laughs> Anything. There, there's that many more people there in need and can buy your products that it generates an enormous amount of profit. Caskets. Yeah. Just caskets from the amount of pollution. <laughs> it's a good business. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he doesn't have the brains not to, 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 you know, to go along with... Uh, the climate crisis. Yeah. You know, see, Kennedy would be positive in that respect. This guy's negative in that respect, but nonetheless, he's going in the direction that brought about the Kennedy downfall. What's the climate crisis? Well, if two percent more pollution arises, it may be irreversible, and it can cause millions of people's death in certain countries. Or Including they said the waters, etc. The climate crisis, including Mar-a-Lago of all, ironically saying, yeah. 
It's going to be one of the first to go, they say. It's right on the water's edge. Newport Beach. There it goes. Yeah. yeah. Balboa Island. Beautiful, yeah. but they're that close. That's why Coast of Maine is going to be an ultra million dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you feet in the air, according to my... <laughs> That's right. That's where every house around here is going to be worth a million or more. <laughs> I got to go, folks. I have to drive to a wonderful baby shower in Los Angeles. So thanks for the article. Okay. Oh, have a safe thanks, Are we Dina? having uh, par minutes tomorrow? Mm, good question. Good. Okay, where? I don't mind, I don't mind posting it. Uh, I'm... Uh, Monday is is questionable um, because I have to perform this service uh, for another week. I'm I'm teaching. I'm, I'm contracting. <clears throat> okay, so pick it. Well, I can do go? it tomorrow too. Then. Okay, just why don't you do it Monday? tomorrow? Okay, and, and good. Monday. Barbara, good for you. Oh sure, I'll put out an email. Thanks, guys. Can we make okay. it? Can we make so it? Sunday, eight o'clock. Monday at Gina's tomorrow? house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks, eight o'clock tomorrow. Why? Barbara, should I, mean, I mail you? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock on Sundays. Uh, yes. Oh, Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. Oh, you can also oh, email Sunday. Phil for this. Right, right, right. This morning. Um, and the other one, I just need to forward to you. Have it. Interesting, okay. isn't it? Okay. Oh, it should be one that of the is interesting. Emails. Okay. That, okay. that because Barbara, mine. Eight o'clock tomorrow. It, it, you know, it's like, you know, in a way, it's a relief. Somebody to say that, you know, <laughs> you know, all that conspiracy stuff you thought, that's. You were right. You, that that was a term used to discredit the truth and, and keep keep it validate false assumptions, validate uh, false explanations. Yeah. See, I would have loved to have been part of the group that had a think tank. That, that's a think tank operation. Right. That's right. It's like sorry. Right. They sat around and they said, now how are we going to save this? How are we going to keep the public from ever discovering the truth? And that's a think tank operation. Someone finally said, conspiracy theory. And they all said, yeah, man, that'll do it. Mm. So but for that, they got true. several million dollars. Yeah, stick in, in the, the word theory tank. and make it scientific. So it's a straw hat mm. argument, right? Straw, uh, what's it called? Straw man. Straw man argument. Yeah. Right. That went from a straw man argument to a conspiracy. <laughs> brilliant. That's a thing that's brilliant. Yeah. So those people that are voting for Trump, <coughs> what what's behind that? Because it's not just religion and, and the conservative, but is it some something else? that's motivating them? Oh, then you'll have to advance a theory to advance that. No. I mean, there's certainly a, a faction there that is very religious, but he's promising jobs, he's promising um, infrastructure, he's promising um, power, our image as a power nation again. And uh, and then the religion, the ones that want birth control, uh, you know, Planned Parenthood, the demise. So I'm wondering if they're all this highly conservative area group of people, or is there a mixture somewhere? I'm just puzzled how he got in so radically. I, I mean, I would, I, I'd rather not have Clinton either. But well, you have to tell us your puzzle because uh, you could ask, you could ask people around here to answer that question. Which is why, given the fact that Trump proposed these things, why is it that you didn't vote for him? Yeah. Well, Very nice that, to that. That. Okay. 
Okay. Why is it you didn't vote for him? Yeah. I don't know. Why didn't anybody vote for him? What, by the way, did you vote for him? No. Well, why did you answer the question? Why do you leave yourself out? I was wondering why the people who did vote for him. Pardon me. Answer it yourself. Okay. I didn't like a salesman. And that means what for you? A salesman, is that right? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, put more words on it. What do you mean? It's not just a salesman. Well, what did you say? I saw he didn't have a plan or any. I mean, what I, I saw his plan was for himself primarily, right not not a plan to help individuals and people. So that's where I stood. I didn't see him making peace with all the people in the country. So then conclude from that, what would you say? I guess that the ultra-right would be seeing that, that it's continuing a war in it. that there's always going to be wars with the Hispanics, with the blacks, with the pinks, the blues, the wealthy, the... Now, would you say, as you reflect upon it, is that a good answer to your question? Uh, based on what I've read, that's all I can... I, 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 so far, yeah. yeah. Now you can... can you might go around and ask whether anyone else agrees with you. Well, I don't know if they agree, but what they saw, why they didn't vote for it, or why they did vote for it. Why don't you ask? There are people here, are they not? I mean, yeah, you're, why didn't you're, you? you're raising it. I'm saying, why don't you ask the question to people around here? Well, uh, who voted for Trump? Nastasha did. Why? Um, given how much she rants about the immigrants here who should be sent back to their own countries, I suspect that was one issue that attracted her. Why didn't you vote for Trump? Well, I had found out a lot about him, like all of his bankruptcies. I figured he'd bankrupt the country. I know why I didn't vote for him. Okay. I'm pretty much the same age as him. I grew up in the exact same environment that he grew up in, with the exception of not having any money or getting laid as much as he did. Um, and everything that I stood for throughout that whole process, which was civil rights, women's rights, um, international aid, uh, a, a conscious view that America can 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 lead in in a positive way. All these things that were that were kind of a subtext to whatever else was going on behind the scenes. But all the stuff that we that, that we he stood against every one of those things that I saw that we had evolved throughout my lifetime. Every one of those advancements that we had made, little advancements we've made throughout my lifetime, he stood against every one of those. That's right. And so I, I that's, that's, you know, and, and besides, he wasn't presidential. He disgusted me as a human being. And I could not see that man speaking for our nation. See. But, but the other thing was that everything, he, he was completely blind to him, a legacy. Yeah. And his, his complicity with China and Russia was not revealed until after mm -hmm. the election. Mm -hmm. and therefore, he didn't stand as a Kennedy advocate for international peace and coming to oh, join yeah. mm -hmm. peaceful or coexistence with both China and, and Russia. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to. Right, that was that was mm -hmm. under the table. And, uh, 
now it's a big surprise. What was he trying to do? Benefit himself? Um, the issue, of course, is who cares whether it benefited himself if he could bring about peace with these two countries, but he never made that a platform during his election. Mm. Yeah. I think he had to keep it secret because it was all to benefit himself. Yeah. If he had made it a public. Right. It may have been, he may have gotten our vote. Yeah. He, he took, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to pay off my mafia debts. No. I'm actually trying to do something good here. Yeah. But my view was he was trying to pay off his mafia debts. That's right. So he's, the, he's doing the same thing to Kennedy under the table and is only being revealed now and therefore he poses an international threat to the existing powers of the right-wing movement. <laughs> he never made it part of his platform and <laughs> he could have. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, he's oh, a salesman, so... He was excellent at crafting an image of himself that the people wanted to see. Over and over again, people didn't ever really care about his policy. They spoke about the way he said things. He says what's on his mind. Yeah, he speaks you know, his he mind. He expresses himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't hold back. He's not politically correct. But what he said. And that was the reason they wanted to vote for him. Huh. You know, because he would say things like, Hillary's a crook and we're going to send her to jail. And he would speak in a way that wasn't presidential, like, I don't think people voted for him because of his policy so much. Like, hmm. many, of his, many of his, and many of his supporters don't even know his policies. They just, he, has he, he just spoke to them on an emotional level. Yeah, mm -hmm. gave them the, the character they wanted. Good old hope. Yeah, like, and anger. No. I oh. think you need to tap into the anger to find no. out why people voted for Trump. Mm-hmm. Partial, partial. And I want to just add to that list of lost causes, the environment. Mm -hmm. See, like right now, he, he could do a counterattack and say, look, the real reason I'm doing this is to bring about peace with Russia and China. What the hell's wrong with you people? It had changed the whole political scene. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have enough brains to, to realize that he's touching a vital, vital issue among American and the world population. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't. But he also can't lose support of that small minority that got him elected. Yeah, that Because they're going to be like, well, I'm not going to be friends with the Ruskies, those Chinese communists over there. Like, no making peace with them. No, we like, want to wipe them out. That's, that's <laughs> much of the conservative <laughs> military ethic is we're Americans and they got this world that's really patriotism. So he'd lose their, that connection. Yeah. He's got his son-in-law selling American citizenship to Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> and his son-in-law making millions upon millions of dollars among the Chinese for special favors. Yeah. Uh -huh. American citizenship. And the favors to come to the United States and invest. <laughs> well, they stole all that money from the the the. the this is oligarch money. No. There's no real money in China. Maybe a little capitalism money. But all the money that I worked with when I worked over at that pool over there, across the bay, uh, was oligarch money. Russian oligarch money. It was Chinese oligarch money. It was money that these families had already been long established here, uh, long before capitalism really took hold in, in, in China. This was money stolen from the Communist Party. Our stolen because of the Ch Communist Party mm -hmm. in China. Yeah. Mafia, mafia, whether it's Chinese, Russian, mm -hmm. or American. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's... Criminal enterprise. That, mm -hmm. you know, I would go to these parties, uh, the Christmas parties, when all the mothers would make things for the teachers. And you, 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 you couldn't look around the room, there were so many diamonds, blue diamonds, red wow. diamonds. I mean, blue diamonds that hurt your eyes Shoot. to look at them. Uh, there was so much money, and these are just little Chinese women, little oh. Chinese ladies with all these diamonds. This is, <laughs> I said, this is, yeah. this, and they hated me. So here, the, you're saying, or there's some indication that this whole issue regarding the investigation of Trump and his relationships with Russia and China, etc., um, that the GOP 
doesn't want it to be investigated. And yet, given what you're saying, it sounds like they would want that investigation because then they could get rid of it. So I'm missing something. I don't understand those steps. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't see evidence that the GOP wants to get rid of them. I don't either. Well, I thought that was part of what you were saying. Well, no. They, it doesn't look like they are wanting to get rid of them, but it sounds like they would want to if they, if, if they saw that he was making a relationship and creating relationships with China and, and Russia. as I understood what you were saying. They're, they're not, they don't care whether there's a, 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 an underlying relationship with he and Russia at this point, as, as far as I can see. They don't, they didn't care about commies, comments, his investigation. So I'm missing something. <clears throat> yes, you are. Well, that's why I said it. Uh, so what is it? Well, one of, one of the uh, uncertain facts in politics is why <clears throat> the Republican Party is not behind uh, Trump. There's a large segment of the Republican Party that are against Trump, as well as the part that are for him. It's not, it's not complete GOP support of Trump. Right. But it's the ultra-right seems to be the ones that are behind him. That's See. true. It depends upon what goals you're, you're pointing to that they're behind him for. Well, that they the would not... Domestic policies. Oh. Okay, and those domestic policies would be creating a Christian state or government. Likely. And it doesn't matter whether he has some relationship with Russia and China, as long as he's moving forward in that direction. Charter school advancing. Okay. Third push. The point, the point that you're leaving out is to what degree is his relationships with China and Russia been kept even from them, the right wing. Oh. Well, I didn't know that was being kept, so. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a this G, GOP is, is not a unified party on this issue. Yeah. They're not. Because a lot of his moves towards Russia have been secretive. I do not know to what degree that all of the GOP's congressmen are aware of that fact and were aware of that fact for the last six months. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, it doesn't sound like that they were. Well, that's something I don't know, which, which if, if someone knows, they could make a forthright article about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess if they find out that he is, then he becomes the enemy then? Well, it sure comes down to how much of the GOP realized that, that Flynn was operating against their interests while s still playing the role he was playing. I see. So like that Trump Tower he built in Montreal, um, he had to use Russian money to build it, and then after 10 months it went bankrupt and he lost it. And that happened about six months ago, and so now it is owned by the Russians because they had the money in it. So everything he's building is being built by Russian money, 
and he's going to default on everything, no. and then the Russians will end up owning lots of stuff here, well, and they'll be our, no, therefore and, they'll be our buddies. Yeah, and it appears to be quite clear that the, the reason he needs Russian money is because no one in the United States will give it to him after right. his, his history of defaults all over the place. Right. That he profits from. Right. Yeah, he's, they are they are banking him. Mm -hmm. And They're the assumption now, of course, is that people like Flint, as well as that other guy, uh, yeah, where is where the the vehicles for making a financial agreement that allowed him to, to amass a fortune to invest into things like the Montreal Hotel, right. There's like eight or but, ten but, people. But the, the underlying thing is, mm -hmm. why would they be willing to do that? Why would they, you know, they're not fools. I think but, it has to do with they oil. They have the same information we have. If you're a Russian and you own several banks or have several banks, why would you ever give that man money? No one in America would. Did. No one in because America. Because he's, if he becomes president, then he can open up some oil for you. The concessions, they, because, they agreed yeah. that if Trump got in, right. they would lift the, all of the restrictions against the Russian economy. So right, right, called right. Rest no. That's right. Therefore, they paid him millions. Go ahead, because we're going to get all of those restrictions lifted from our economy. Right, that's right. That's where Tillerson comes yeah, Now the question is, how many Republicans knew that? Right. It doesn't sound like too many. <laughs> you know, the information was out there. They, yeah, but yeah. And it, and it has, well, it hasn't been certainly public, but you know, I mean, rich people don't read newspapers. Right. They have newsletters that give them the facts about international affairs. Like NPC, and NPC is moving in the right wing right now. Right, they got yeah. Greta. They got Greta. They pulled her off Fox News, and they got two other guys coming in that are right wing. So NPC is moving in the right wing. So is that the conservative, or is that the GOP, or? Well, that's it. No, they, they, well, They're in line according with to the president of the NBC, he said they want to make the NBC group more centrist, which means move it towards the right. Yeah. Okay. So it's consciously designed that way. There mm -hmm. goes Rachel Maddow. No, she's a goner. Yeah, she'll oh. be there only for a short while. Oh, okay. Or Matthew, whatever his name is. So it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. But in one way. No, like this is the first time that a lot of people are in the know. Right. The silence is over. Yeah, that's true. Right for information. <laughs> yeah. I like to watch free speech TV. Do you ever watch that? Channel 348? Which one is it? Free speech TV? Yeah, it bores the hell out of me most of the time. <laughs> yeah, most of the time it bores, but, but they've got some good revealing stuff and no commercials. Yeah, I haven't been in a fortunate situation of being able to tune them in. Yeah, you have to, I think you have to have cable. I'm not sure. Do you watch, Josh, do you watch free speech TV? No. no. You don't watch TV? Oh, I watch television. I just don't watch that. I have a certain disdain for politics because while it's wonderful, I, I feel like my influence on it is very little. And so I try to understand where I could fit in there and how to participate in it, but um, it's kind of a rabbit hole that like, plus I just don't have the time to delve into that. <laughs> when I go home today, I'm going to be doing laundry. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> I clean the bathroom today. <laughs> see, this article proves that point. Mm. That a whole level of, uh, of understanding our national and international 
affairs has been kept kept us from understanding it. It's been hidden how it's available. But we don't have in the same way the availability of the forces that are going on right now. We have to assume that. Someone knows and will let us know 30 years from now. What I'm really intrigued about is it seems like a lot of people know this guy's a crook. It seems pretty obvious. I mean, he told the guy to stop an investigation against him. And it's admitted in public that this is what happened, you know, unless we don't believe the director of the FBI. So knowing that he's a crook is not enough. Like, what's stopping our country from taking action? What's, what keeps him in place? What are the powers that still allow for that? You know, what is the because, cultural... Because the evidence is not that clear. Oh, because we don't have, like, a signed document that says... A smoking gun. Well, there was no... All, all we have is a smoking gun. Right. After a while, though, it's like, <laughs> how can there be nine smoking guns out there? <laughs> you know, like... But, you know, like, see, the question is, how are these people conducting the hearing? If they're proceeding in a legal way, so far, well, what we get from these, a good number of people, is the way they feel about what's going on. Mm. Subjective. And that, that has no weight in a legal hearing. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is, this is not a legal hearing. This is, a, this is an exploratory hearing. But the background issue might be impeachment. Uh -huh. But impeachment is not a legal, it's not a crime. It's not? No. Therefore, it doesn't follow that one should follow a legal, strict legal approach to it, which means looking for the kind of evidence that would convict someone. So in order for action to occur, we need legal evidence, even though we're not involved in a legal situation. Well, let's say one, one person on TV hit it, and that was a, a woman uh, who uh, is, of course, an expert witness. She was a judge. And she said, look, let me make this straight. Impeachment is not, it's not an issue of law. Why? Because all you have to prove for impeachment is intention. You can't, you can't convict someone purely on intention. You have to establish corroborating evidence. Mm -hmm. So she said this hearing, and she's quite right, is working on the assumption, looking for legal data, when if the, in truth, if you're after impeachment, all you need to do is frame your arguments in such a way that you can bring a likelihood argument against someone that would show their, their, their as it were, conscious or unconscious motive that would indicate the right to impeach. Well, that seems pretty blatantly obvious then. Well, from, I haven't heard that view from anyone except this one woman. Asking the director of the FBI to stay after for a private meeting and saying, like, I hope this, you know, investigation goes away. Like, <laughs> but you have foolish. to show that he was conspiring to obstruct justice. That's different. He never used those words. Right. Intention. Yeah. That would be the intention. You're his yes, boss. should focus on intention, mm -hmm. not looking for the... That's the, what Nixon got yeah. charged with, conspiring to obstruct justice. And they have the tapes and stuff that showed him in conversation with people in the background saying, let's do this. Well, that just seems like it would take some more digging, because I bet that's yeah. out there. <laughs> like, can't cover all this up that well in this digital day and age. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's some email, some ones and zeros out there that... And this records people that having these discussions or memos or yeah. and now and we're living in an age in where both houses are occupied by Republicans. You have to convince them that he's a sufficient threat, <laughs> even with the intention. <coughs> but he definitely had an intention. So you you know you have a convoluted both sides and it's really Quite a dramatic. And they're in a position where they're like, he's our guy. He's he's got the big R in front of like his party name. So therefore we in one sense have to support him, but we hate him. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's right. So that's what do we do in this situation when we really would want him out, but yeah. it's just gonna damage us and our party, because now we have the two houses of Congress and we have the presidency and soon the, the court. And we're just running our ship into the shore. <laughs> yeah, and add to it that if you get rid of him, 
there's an issue of who's going to replace him. <laughs> a man who may in fact be worse, yeah. depending That's upon right. civil rights. Yeah. yeah. He'll <laughs> so it's wonderful. We're living in a great age where being rational is, might cost you your life. Yeah. Which is what happens in all tyrannies. In all? In tyrannies, oh, the yeah. first people to go are the intellectuals. Yeah. They're keeping a list. That's what Omarosa said. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, Omarosa. I'm surprised that um, I gotta get it's only the name. one woman that has that view. I or agree with you. I never heard it until she voiced it. Because, the, I mean, what's at stake is the is the good of the country. That's right. So, and if that's the case, then you don't need evidence. You just, uh, I mean, you don't need proof. You just need intention. That's all. Makes a big difference. Yeah. That's why I'm repeating it. <laughs> well, they have intention. No, some people are saying he's just mentally ill. He's functioning on his own. <laughs> oh, just just that. But that's intent. You can get intention from that. You don't need the the proof of that he's not. That's so funny. He, he's Omarosa, unstable. Man, Manigault. And <laughs> by the way, the psychologists in this country have proven themselves totally corrupt. That's for sure. Right. Yep. I don't know if I'd say it that way, but I would. yeah. Well, how? Uh, well, uh, go ahead because they have been asked for many times to make a diagnosis of Trump and no official APA member has ever done it. Right. That's really. corrupt. We could do the Gottschalk Glacier stuff again. That's no, right. we couldn't. Easily do Why it with Gottschalk. Be a snap to do it with Gottschalk. Why couldn't we? Here's what she said. By God, he, he would show all over the places. This, this. Cognitively <laughs> impaired. Cogn cognitively impaired. He keeps repeating he keeps himself. Beyond, every beyond every what what we'll we'll have to Conflicting statements. Yeah. I'm surprised nobody has contacted you, you know, saying, hey, you're the person who did hey, Ronald Reagan, hey, right? Why don't you do it? That's true. Hey, why don't you do it? No. Come on, why won't you do why it? Why won't I do it? Yeah, the hell with other people. Uh, you have the knowledge. You have the. You're qualified. Well, you saw what happened when we, when, it was done with Reagan. It was, it fell on deaf ears and. Hey, this won't fall on deaf ears. People will be happy to hear he's mentally ill, so they can quit being sad. You do need something you know, like that, these, though. You do need some scientific are research. Primary, primary researchers on a, a, a psychological vehicle that will demonstrate the state of mind of people, whether or not they're sufficiently stable or unstable. Period. I think it hasn't been uh, updated. You know the standardization on data on it. On the highest level, they worked okay. with the guy who designed this tool, Godshot. Pleasure content analysis go. Yeah. So why didn't you do it? Actually, we have a colleague in hey, Australia. Why didn't you do it? The two of you can come together and do it. You can get Rhonda and the original three people working on that study. Yeah. That would be very interesting. Okay, yes. You see, ask them. To see Trump's diagnosis. He may even come out more schizophrenic. Well, then we'll have like a proper right. word for him. And we don't have to worry about extemporaneous problems. Hmm. It's all there. Because the everything he says is extemporaneous. Everything comes out on his Twitter. Right? No filter. All you have to do is collect, all you have to do is collect the, the, the statements made. On I just don't want to look at his tweets. Well, go ahead. I don't tweet. I don't do tweeters. So? When are you going to do it? Do we have to go to the level of tweets? I'm not going there. <laughs> a gotta study go based on tweets? <laughs> yes. I, got the I don't want to go. They got the knowledge. If you want, I can print out all his tweets. You can? All really? Piece of paper. Okay. It would be funny as hell. Not probably only get that, killed, but, but in doing it, you'd have to reveal the fact that you yeah. had the data against Reagan and they blocked it. Yeah. And that's sufficiently to wake up many people because the guy who blocked it, pardon me, 
the consequences of lock came where uh, Gottschalk got a couple of million dollars for a special lab at UCI. Did he not? After the, after the election, he got a large sum of money for UCI. No. Come on, did they, did they, pardon me. What are the consequences of his non-publishing that, re that report? What did they receive, UCI? What did UCI receive? Yeah, any, any grants, any money under the table? Any new buildings? Did he receive any any grants? No. Yes, you did. You did? Yes, you did. You don't know it. Oh, I don't know that. I do. All right, well, I what was it? I heard it from you. <laughs> Years ago, you had it. I remember the night. You were in, the three of you were sitting, we were talking about yeah. the implications of all this. It's okay. It wasn't until Reagan was out that we had, that it was able to be published in a journal of public health. Two years later. Yeah. And the LA Times ran an article on it, and I have the article. Where they called it psychobabble and stuff like that. The editor. What did Gottschalk they get? They didn't call it get psychobabble, but uh, that's the way we would talk about it. Okay. Well, there was one editorial I, I, that I, called I, it psychobabble. Oh, okay. One of the psychologists, one of the congressmen said that it would be irrelevant because if we were to apply it to Congress, 50% of the people in Congress would lose their jobs. Well, there you go. <laughs> it, would show the, it would show our ruling classes <laughs> can be judged as irrational. The other thing nice about, valuable about Gottschalk is that in all the other psychological, or many, I don't know if there are any right now, but many of the psychological tests are self-reports. That is the MMPI, the yeah. Halstead right hand. The person has to voluntarily go through the process. What he did was he developed a pattern of language behavior that you can classify. So anybody can be looked at. It, and involuntary or voluntary. That's so right. You can take a look at anybody. That's right and look at their language behavior. And therefore you would conclude we have sufficient basis for judging them. Yep, and then you can judge based right. on that. Only I'd like to look at Pence first. <laughs> like to look at... Pence. Oh. The hell with it, right? Pence. Pence is secondary. Well, he may not be anymore. Who knows? No, you see, all you need to do is get a nice grant and you can do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> a grant. It's true. And no one works on anything without a grant. <laughs> well, it's all computerized now, so it's pretty fast. Oh, really? I mean, once you get it, well, then you once you get it. the sentences in, you get your results in like less really? than a minute. You have all your results. Oh, oh really? Good. You've got that? Oh, let's try it. You have the, uh, you have that data? You have the... I can get it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How do you get it? Maybe get about I'm 10 sure, pages. I'm sure it's, it's, it's easy. I mean, get about 10 a tweet pages. History. How about um, any public speeches he's given? Sure. Does he have any of those? Sure, you could go to the debates. <laughs> debates. Oh, the debates. Now, do you need an umbrella to shave your ass? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's probably a fast trip to Campy China. Or what about okay. asking okay. why the psychologist... I declare that now we're having an NS uh, public oh. meeting and we're going to pass a resolution or deny the possibility <laughs> of oh. you guys going ahead with that particular study for which we'll pay you five dollars. <laughs> you now have a study. And if you don't pay us, we just did it on our own. Can we be charged? <laughs> okay, let's open it for discussion. Um, There's the how about you? I think Regina should write a letter to all of those APA members asking them why they are so afraid to render a diagnosis publicly. Well, what would they base it on? 
tweets. Yeah, but what measure would they use? Well, they've got diagnoses. I mean, I've, I've seen narcissism bandied about. Yeah, but what would they be measuring? What would be the measure of narcissism? Would they be using that as a criteria? I don't know. There may be something out there. I don't there know. You're reflecting. a clinical psychologist. What do you use when you see a patient come in? And Did you well, say you I use, use self-report measures. Thing? That's where. That's why I said that there's self-report measures oh. out there. Oh. The MMPI. Oh, so they just lack a measure. They, I don't know. There may be a measure out there that has a list of criteria and a psychologist can just check it off. Mm -hmm. I, I am not aware of it. But I do know that the difference between Gottschalk and <coughs> other you. measures I'm familiar with is that the, all the others are self-report. You have to voluntarily participate. Mm -hmm. And the other is that you voluntarily come in for an evaluation with a therapist and he goes through and evaluates you. Mm. But you don't, I don't know any measure that can, there may be out there, you know, that can go through any kind of literature, any person's statements. They have what they call words, like how many words a person uses. I haven't looked any much up into that, like if, so many, if, uh, if somebody uses so many words in so many minutes and stuff. But I, I think that's more, they're giving it more interest. There are other measures. I'm sure there's articles that have been written. Okay, good. I you don't could, know. You could I be the researcher. Yeah. I doubt. It is not conceivable that the Gottschalk laser content analysis scale is not known by psychologists. A sufficient number of them. Right. Okay. No, I don't know. There may be. I, I just don't know. Well, what do you mean that there may be others? There are, but I don't know. What do you say, Pierre? I don't know what you're saying. It is not possible for me to assume that other psychologists are not aware of the pleasure content analysis scale since it's made public and it's been out for several years. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, everybody but Gottschalk were psychologists that worked on it. Golding Glazer, yeah. uh, several people from uh, different parts of the world. Yeah. They're psychologists. Yeah. Therefore, I think very few. Therefore, people. the total number of people that are aware of it and know of its potentiality are not using it. That is absolutely needed in today's world. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I concluded they're true control. <laughs> yeah, right. You could, what you could do is just uh, get all the different leaders, May and Macron and Putin. <laughs> well, they usually do that. They, I mean, based on IQs, I think uh, Clinton was supposed to have the highest. Trump claims his is 156, <laughs> which is higher than any other president. Oh, really? And he, he tweeted, sorry, losers, but my IQ is 156. So he did that in 2013. I just read it. You're going to enjoy reading these tweets. Um, <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, well, maybe. but based on, but but they, but the study is that he has a vocabulary of a third grader, and what they're afraid is that, that he's smart enough to keep his vocabulary at a third. But it, it, the word he uses most often is very. Everything is very, very, and if it's not very, very, then it's a hyperbole, and it's always an adjective. He doesn't have any substantive content to any of his speeches. Right. He can't talk about mechanisms and how things work. He can't talk about the way ideas interact with one another. This is what I've noticed. But he can use expletives and, and, and qualifiers very well. But uh, he's only limited to uh, his vocabulary. Maybe, as far as we know, limited to 500 words. It's huge. <laughs> that's, a di that's a diagnosis. It's very, very huh? huge. huge. That's a diagnosis. That's a di that's, that I've been watching. I've been, waiting for, I've been waiting for his word count to come up. Uh, because they do it with all the presidents, and they must be working like hell to keep that information. Somebody doesn't want to get on Omarosa's list. Someone doesn't want to say it. Somebody doesn't want to get on the list, because um, um, we should know by now. Yeah. And, uh, it's, but, but, it's not like but, we don't what know what about it. Watch any co comic representation of him, and every one of them like nails his exact language. Well, and, 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 and way of speaking, he speaks and formulaically too. Because yeah. when I watch it, when I'm at the gym, and they do the the closed caption, <laughs> um, it takes a while for the words to come up. 
and I can finish every one of the sentences sure. because it's so it, 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 idio, idiomatic. Uh, he doesn't have any original uh, content. It took a lot of control to not say idiotic, right? Uh, what the <laughs> it's more like a developmental and, and now he's going to go before this group voluntarily or be subpoenaed. Hey, under Martin. oath, under oath. Under oath. And you're going to therefore have the material you need to make analysis. Yep. Par excellence, right? But it's already done. David just finished it. Yeah, thank you. It's more like a retardation. Kinda. But the well, word he uses most often is very. Yeah. In every speech, it'll be very, very, and very, and very, very, and very. Yeah. Everything. He, he has to speak in superlatives. Right. And if you can't think of the, the superlative, it'll be very, very. And uh, when he uses very, usually his sentences are incomplete. Again, this is why I go to like, this is a, he's a character. So once he says that, if you, it's ambiguous, then the people fill in what he means by that. It's just vague enough for him to be able to give a good feeling state, and then people are like, yeah, that's right. He is going to take care of the economy, and then who knows how, but they're going to fill in what they think is very, very good. He's and like a canvas. He makes himself into a canvas. Warshaw. It's really an, he's he's an incredible media Verbal figure. Like, he fooled enough people to get voted president. I mean, this is his biggest heist. He's been the biggest dumbass in public on television for years, and people all see it. And he was still able to sell people that he was their savior. Their well, political he, may not, he may have gotten in illegally, too. You have to consider that. Well, right. He may have gotten in. Oh, look, I'm not going to put it past him that he's got a deep, dark ability to do all the stuff under the table. That's how he became the rich guy that he is. And the media he, said while he was in. While the election process was going on, many of the leading figures in the media said, look here, we are not interested in exposing this man. We're, we're interested in profit. Right. And we're interested in this man can, ga can gather an audience and we're there to support it, to communicate it. News and media are ratings up. are right. up higher. And they're still up even though after the elections they traditionally, you know, drop. They're still high. People are still interested. And right. Every, and everybody's right. waiting for the for the drama yeah, of the week, you know, the, wow. the scandal of the week. Yeah. What channel four? It's MSNBC. She's on it. Oh, that's channel four, NBC. Well, no, but she's not on NBC. She's on. She's only on cable. She's the one who left. The cable. What number is that? Uh, well, it would be uh, on mine. It's thirty. <laughs> Uh, but MSNBC, it's like <coughs> CNN. Wherever you get CNN, it'll be two, two know above where or below. Is. And Fox is there. Mm. And Fox. Yeah. They're, they're, those are the three big cable news channels: MSNBC, CNN, and, yeah. and Fox. They stole Trump. Yeah. He Fox did. Yeah, the media sold Trump. They could have exposed him. Yeah, I, I'm, get, I'm kind of getting yeah. that now. That yeah. you know, uh, Colbert probably wouldn't have a job right now because he was doing really poor in the ratings. But then he started speaking truth to authority and, and calling out Trump. And now he's the most popular late night show. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I've watched them all, and they're all pretty inane. But then you watch Colbert, and his humor mm -hmm. is so spot on that you mm -hmm. almost feel like you're learning something. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the problem with humor. There's always an implied insight. And, you know, they never talk about the insight, they go with the humor. And, um, but Colbert's humor is really the best. But he said, thank you, Mr. Trump, you've given me a career. Yeah. <laughs> He's right. Yeah. yeah. Saturday Night Live, though I've never seen it. Well, it's, 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 it's puerile. You don't want to. Yeah. Okay. It's puerile. It's, it's childish. Uh, I wouldn't stoop any lower than Stephen Colbert. For yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know some of the stuff. I, I, only I like him. Me and my TV McCarthy? are the only two people in my life. Oh, right does uh, spice, oh. spicy, Spars, <laughs> spicy or spicer? Rarely. And I like even <laughs> the guy who does. Be Trump. careful! It's gonna go away someday. <laughs> I mean, it really takes. It. It's, it's it's good actually. I'm glad they're mm -hmm. doing it. Frankly, right? I have those original sheets. I gave them to you. They're over in your. <clears throat> on your uh, backpack behind you.
They're over here, Pierre. On your backpack. Oh, okay. Ah, good. 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 The reason I want these is it's got a three-hole punch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they're hard to find holes in them. <laughs> Here, do you need a ride? Yes. We ready? Yeah. Here we go. Thank you, folks. Okay, thank you.